Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast with yours truly, Jack Bosch. Um, and we are going to talk where in, in our podcast where we talk about land flipping, where we talk about uh, cash flow from land. We talk about other investment methods having to do with, with cash and cash flow. And today we're going to talk about how to do land flipping from outside of the United States. Basically, completely 100% virtually, completely location independent, doesn't matter where you live. All right. We'll, we'll get started as always, just after this little message. Welcome to the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Investing Podcast with your hosts, Jack and Michelle Bosch. Together, let's uncover the secrets to building true wealth through real estate and living a purpose-driven life. All right, everyone. So let's get started. This is Jack Bosch speaking, and I am today having the pleasure of talking with John Basler, uh, or in his German name is Sönke Basler, um, but he is coming to us from Germany, and he is doing land flipping from Germany. So let's call you by your American name, John. John, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you, Jake. Thanks for inviting me. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you very much. I'm doing great. <laughs> Um, it's a wonderful week. The, uh, it's the weather is nice and the family is healthy and everyone is going good. So I'm super excited. Glad to hear that. <laughs> and I, I trust the same is true for you. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. So, okay, so John, so so tell us a little bit. So you do land flipping using our land profit methods, right? And um, and you actually do that from Germany. Correct. Correct. Yes. So, one hundred percent from abroad. Yeah. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit how 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 it came all about. How did you find us? How um, how did you stumble upon land flipping in the first place? All right. So, I think it was three three and a half years ago that I started, um, and um, I think you you presented one time um, the LPG on an entrepreneur congress in, in Germany, and uh, well, I didn't attend, but uh, I, I viewed the uh, the the recording. Okay. And well, at the beginning, Jack, I, I thought that can, it couldn't be true, and but uh, for somehow I couldn't resist buying the LPG, and um, it was a decision that I um, I never regretted. And uh, so I bought the LPG and I started doing land flipping. Uh, that time I still had my my, my job uh, in the consultancy. And, and by the way, LPG stands for Land Profit Generator, which oh, is yeah, sorry. entry level <laughs> program. So right now we, it's a Land Profit Generator. It's our, um, then there's our software, the investment dominator. And then together there we are, um, the training for that is the maximizer program that we have been talking about quite a bit right now here, right? So go ahead. Yeah, and uh, so I, I started three years ago, uh, went through the uh, entire Land Profit Generator program. And started my first deals three years ago. I was very, very, very glad and um, was very happy. It was just a small deal that I had. My first deal was very, very, uh, very small deal. So I just earned, I think, 2,000 or 2,500, maybe 3,000 bucks. Uh, but however, I was so proud of myself. And um, so I... I, I grew my group business and I think one and a half years ago, um, I quit my job at a consultancy and I, I do land flipping now totally from abroad, so totally from uh, outside from the US. Um, and uh, I do it, um, I quit my job and it's uh, now my, my full-time full, full uh, business. And uh, this is a, a decision I, I never regret uh, that I did in my life. Yes, now I bet. Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so you had a job with like a consulting company, like management consulting company. We're out there traveling a lot probably and so on. And, and then you started uh, land flipping. So let's talk about that first deal. Now, you will never forget that first deal probably, right? Uh, uh, of course, never, no. <laughs> right, so you, you never forget it. So, so what did that first deal do to you in terms of like uh, trust in the system and everything? Well, first of all, I mean, it, it proved to me um, that the system works. You know, uh, I mean, there's such scam, of course, on the internet, and you can never believe whether it is true or not. And so it, uh, um, and uh, I, I needed for myself to prove for myself that the system works. And I also had to prove to, to my, uh, well, to my family that the investment and the time that I, I invested into the system was, was worth. And 
Um, finally, I did. A, uh, uh, I, I had. I, I, I got a, a, a lot under contract, and I was able to, to sell it with a profit. I did from from today's view of uh, view uh, viewpoint. I did so many mistakes. I did so many mistakes, but nevertheless, there was a lot. My first lot, and I learned so much with that. You know, uh, Jack. Uh, we have already talked about that. Uh, that you have to. Uh, overcome some obstacles when you do it from abroad. For example, the wet signature that you have to do in front of a notary uh, or in the presence of a notary. And yeah. this is always, um, there was uh, some obstacle that I had to overcome. So there was a, a small deal, but the lesson learned was huge. And yeah. I will never forget that deal. Yeah, sometimes I always say the first deal doesn't matter if that's a big deal or a small deal. Now, of course, a big deal is more pleasure then uh, it's, it's even better than a small deal but um sure but uh because it's more money right but the main, main important thing is that the that the big that the first deal teaches you all the lessons like it 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 it, it shows you it works it boosts your self-confidence it shows those around you that it works it proves that it was worth it and it shows that you can do more of these and 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 it, it and it makes you more confident in the entire process because now you have done all the steps, right? So it's that first deal that we also, when we in our coaching program, um, we also we we're really focusing on getting our students to that first deal, and ideally not just one first deal, but multiple first the multiple deals, so that um, so that they can hone the skill because what you're really learning is a skill for life, right? It's, it's, a, sure. it's a lifelong method. Now, if you ever want to flip a house in Germany, uh, in the United States, it's, the, it's, it's a different process, but the closing process is similar, right? The, the mailing process, if you do direct mail, is, is similar. It's just obviously dealing with a house is different. So, but you already learned three quarters of what you need to learn in order to now, in order to do additional kind of things. So you learned... You learned the life skill there, so that's 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 fantastic. Um, so now, um, so so then you did one deal, then you did more deals, and by now, how many deals have you done? It is fifty deals. Okay. So I think in total we have done sixty to seventy deals. Okay. All right. So you start as always. You start like with a few deals in the first year, with more deals in the second year. Now you said it's about three years, three and a half years. This year the goal is fifty deals. And, uh, and, and, and I heard just last week or so, you got how many deals under contract? Well, just in one day, I had five signed offers in the mailbox. Five signed offers. That's fantastic. Uh, now, you also, at, uh, you also attended um, well, our two-day workshop, right? So, uh, so, so can you, how was that, like our software? So you're using our software, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just a, a very good tool. Um, when you want to scale, when you want to grow, it is a very good tool because it helps you for all the administrative staff, all the leads, all the documents, all the uh, all the data. So this is mainly done. Most of them uh, of the tasks is done automatically, and uh, in addition to that, it provides you uh, a fantastic um, fantastic two web pages. So you can have a buyer side and a seller page, and uh, well, you, you get all it all together in one tool and this is this is just great and so this this next the workshop you're referring to uh helped me a lot to to work uh, within a team with a virtual assistant with my sales manager and uh made my processes my, my company processes um, much easier awesome awesome so so now let's jump into, we'll talk about it perhaps later a little bit more, but uh, let's jump into the actual, what people are, are wondering about. So can you really do this? And obviously the answer is yes. Can you really do this from, from outside of the country? Or, I mean, the same things we're about to talk about also apply if you take, if you buy an RV and you're just traveling with the RV around the country, right? So if you're, if you're basically location independent, you, you don't, if you're, if you're traveling in an RV around the country, you could technically bring a printer with you and then stop by a post office and drop off letters. But the RVs usually don't have that much space. So if you are traveling with an RV or so, you still want to outsource and automate everything as if you're completely, um, so, that, so if you're completely out, as if you're outside of the country, right? So you are outside of the country. As a matter of fact, you're not just outside of the country. Like we're like in Canada or Mexico, you are nine hours time difference away from at least the West Coast and six hours time difference away 
from the uh, from the East Coast. Now that plays obviously a big role into your systems into the into the outsourcing. So so let's talk through the different steps that you need to outsource and how you basically outsource them, right? So let's talk first of all. Our system starts with uh, with selecting our counties. Now you can do that from at home because that's you can do that with, on the internet, right? Sure. Then as soon as then then it's uh, then it, uh, the next step is sending out letters. Now, how do you send out letters from Germany? Okay, so first of all, the, the letters are usually created by the investment dominator automatically. This is very convenient. So, and I download them. I just need an internet connection on a laptop, of course. And I download them and send them to a letter house. Uh, I use the uh, ITI. Mailing house, yes. So it's a mailing house uh, based in the US. Yeah. <clears throat> one of the ones we recommend is lpgmailer, I think, dot com. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and right now an integration is actually happening between, another, um, you know, between that com potentially that company or another company and our investment dominator so that you literally click a few buttons and it sends them out right away. So, so you outsource all your mailers. Basically, you're in Germany. You download them, you then email them over to a, or upload them to a website of a mailing house, and they send them out for you. So three, four days later, they are sent out to, uh, automatically out. I don't have to do anything. Right. It's very convenient. From, from an American post office with American stamps, with American thing, because it doesn't make sense to send them from Germany. Particularly right now in these COVID right. times, um, I think one of, our, um, one of our guys that also is in our coaching program, uh, Timon from Germany, he sent me uh, a birthday card. It was very nice of him. He sent me a birthday card. My birthday was in May. He sent the birthday card about three weeks before my birthday, and it arrived here due to COVID and the uh, limited amount of air travel. It arrived here two and a half months later. Oh, wow. So, and three, and a half, three, three, three to three and a half months in the mail, trying to get from Germany over to here. So, so obviously you cannot send out letters from Germany. You want to send them out from the United States and the mailing house does that. So then yeah, how, and, yeah. and in addition to that, so the, the, the mailer, so the sellers that receive the post from Germany would look, well, would look a little bit suspicious if, if they uh, receive, yeah. when they receive mails from, from, from out of the US. So uh, the opening rates would probably go up like crazy because they're like, <laughs> what is that? But then yeah. will they actually call back because they might be like, hmm, who are these people it's, from outside the country who want to buy your property? It's also a term of money. I mean, a stamp from you know, by Emma costs a lot of money sending from Germany to, to US, you yes. know? Right? So, but anyway, I don't want to print them myself. I don't want to print them here. I just want to send it out because I want to scale. I, I think last year I, I, I sent 25,000 letters. So I really don't want to do that manually here in my, my, in my, my, my office. So 25,000 letters, by the way, if you do, um, if you do the houses, if you do housing wealth and with that, you did something like 30 deals or so. Uh, last year I, I did, yeah, something 20, 25, I think. Yeah. All right. So he, it looks like he pretty much got a letter for every thousand letters, a uh, deal for every thousand letters you're out. By the way, if you're in the housing area, you have to send something like 10 to 20,000 postcards a letter to get one deal. With that same amount of volume, he got 20, 25, uh, almost 25 deals. So just, just for the reference point here. So with that said, so, so now the next point is you, you need to take phone calls, right? Because the way we design is that we send out, as you know, uh, we send out uh, letters and people have people call us. We don't do blind offers right off the get-go because it would require all this research and it would it just make people mad. So, so we, we have them call us first. Now, you're nine hours ahead of the West Coast. If somebody, if you do a deal in California, people are going to call you at 5 p.m., which is 2 a.m. Your, your time the next day. Uh, how do you handle that? Okay, I have a call center that automatically answers my, my telephone. So I have the telephone number in the letter. They, if a seller calls the, the, the telephone, it is automatically routed to, to, to a call center. And they, they, I, I send them a script. And they answer the script, so they answer in the name of my company and ask some five, six, seven basic questions. And whenever I get such a call, the call center sends me a report, a small report by email. And so the next day, the next morning, I have to, um, I can work with them and send them offers. All right, there we go. By the way, you don't have to be outside of the country. That's exactly the way that we recommend it. 
for anyone that lives inside the country too, because if you're driving your RV around, or if you just live in New York City, or if you live wherever you want to live, in Alabama or in Phoenix, right? You don't want to print out letters at home in your home printer. You don't want to have to um, go and mail out these, uh, these letters yourself and fold them, stuff them in the ceiling and bring them to the post office. You don't have to take all these phone calls, right? No. You, 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 do let, you let the professionals do that that actually can do that cheaper than you do, right? And that's all explained in our programs. It's like automated in our software. And then when you, when you attempt to maximize your workshop, you actually get trained on those things on how to exactly use them. So with that said, so now the next step is making the offers. Now the offers, understand I can fast forward a little bit. You make, you do your deal analysis, you make your offers and for to send out offers, you can use that same mailing house again, or you can also, what some students do is they have, um, they, there's a couple of people in the United States that specialize on, on sending those offers out as a service for international people. But if you're in the United States, you don't have to even worry about that. Those are the ones that you do indeed do at home. You use our software again, the software uh, produces them right away. There's a deal analyzer inside. You just basically give, uh, find out the value, use our value uh, generation method, also again, made easy in the, in the system, in the software. Then you pull up the, the calculator, you plug in your number, then you mail, you press another button, it out comes your offer, and you basically, that one you fold and, and put into an envelope here and send out to the people. Now, if you don't live in the country, you use the same mailing house again, correct? Or you use a service uh, of a person that does that. We even have team members in our company that offer that service or their mom, one of the team members, her mom offers that service for international students to just send out those, those offers for a couple of bucks a piece or whatever she charges, I don't know. All right, so, so the next step now is, now you got an offer accepted, but where do you have offer accepted? Do they send the offer to you into, to Germany? Or do they oh, accept no. the offer? Uh, do you have a mailing address here in the United States? And how do you get a mailing address in the United States? Oh, this is really easy. Um, there are hundreds of mailing houses that offer virtual mailboxes. And um, so whenever I got a, so I have a, I have a mail address, a US mail address. Um, and whenever I get a mail from, from, a, from, from a seller, for example, uh, accepting my offer, uh, I get a, a scan to my computer, uh, sorry, to my email, and uh, then I can work forward, uh, can, can work ahead with that. And um, this is very convenient. So the mailing house uh, or the virtual mailbox does the job for me. Yeah. So virtual mailbox is the way to go, guys. Uh, that there's again, you can have one in the Empire State Building or you can have one in a little town in Alabama. It doesn't matter where you want. It's just what image you want to portray. And <laughs> most people just pick one in the city they live in. If you're in the United States or if you're international, you pick some in a city, wherever you want that to be. Like it doesn't really matter. You can pick Chattanooga, Tennessee, or you can pick uh, Atlanta, Georgia, or you can pick Phoenix, Arizona. It doesn't matter. So you just pick one um, where the cost is reasonable because, of course, in the Empire State Building, they charge you extra because they're rental space for those boxes and imagine it's like what that is is a, is a, is a space where where there's like the where there's like a physical office where there's actually one or two people working there and they have hundreds and hundreds of little mailboxes so the post office uh brings in uh boxes of mail for all these and each post uh, each mailbox is in different company so they, <laughs> the post office brings a hundred brings boxes of mail and they look who it belongs to but then they scan those in and, uh, and then he can see them from Germany or you can see it from your RV if you're traveling around, right? And uh, you, can, you can see them. You can pull up your laptop somewhere where you have a hotspot or you connect to your, to your hotspot on your phone or you connect to internet at home. And, and then um, you pull it up. You can tell them which ones to open. They open it and voila, there is your contract, right? There's your contract. There's your return mail. There's your government. There's your official notifications from Anything, you can use that for the IRS, you can use that for anything. So it's perfect. And from, from there, you just print it out at home, you count to sign your offer, you scan it back in and you email it back to that seller or you fax it back to the seller, whichever way uh, you want. Or you have it, you, again, you have your, the, the person, uh, you have someone in the US mail it back. But usually at that point, you have the buyer's phone number, you have the, the seller's phone number, you have the seller's email address. You can just communicate them to them via email and, and sent those things over to them. 
And so very again, seldom, very seldom, sorry for interrupting, so very sorry. seldom you need a hard copy, a really a hard copy of the, of the agreement. And so whenever I need a hard copy, I just click on the mail that I need the hard copy and I just forward it by mail to any, any mail address within the US or also with a, uh, uh, into, to, to Germany. So uh, uh, if you're uh, traveling with a RV uh, and you, you know that you will go, that you will visit your, your family very soon, just forward that mail, which is very important, very seldom. Sometimes you want to need, you want to get a hard copy of a con or an agreement or a contract, you just forward it to, to, to somebody and you will get it in your mail two or three days later. All right. Perfect. Wonderful. So, so that's, uh, that's the other thing. So if you do need a hard copy, which is rarely happening because even under Bill Clinton in 1999, uh, the, I think the electronic signatures were made legal in the United States. So the only thing you might get a hard copy of, when I get a hard copy of, is if it's a deed that's being recorded and is being returned to that virtual mailbox and you want that deed in your hands, then you have that one forward it to you, but that kind of happens after recording anyway. So if that takes now six weeks to go over to, to Mexico or to Germany or to, uh, or to Austria, Switzerland, or to wherever it is. So we have students now in the uh, United Emir uh, Arab uh, Emirates. We have students in Chile right now. We have students in, uh, in Asia in different places. So, so um, if, the, if that now takes two, six weeks to get there, with a current slowdown in the post office or COVID, uh, not uh, then international slowdown in the United States, is, the speed is still decent. And then it just, it just takes that, but it's okay because it's already recorded and it's being sent to you. Awesome, now comes to the last part, marketing. Now marketing, all more marketing is online, right? So you do all this thing online and you, uh, you, do, you do all those steps online. It just, you list the properties, you market the properties, you have access to, 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 to Facebook, uh, Insta, uh, Facebook, Mar Facebook Marketplace, Facebook, uh, Landwatch, all those different places. It's all pretty much exactly the same. You might have to use uh, some incognito or VPN or VPS services, but other than that, um, it's exactly the same. And uh, then, then otherwise, you need a phone number, obviously. You need an international phone number, but that's it, guys. It really is as simple as that. So you have to have a few international provisions. So let's think about that. To your Americans watching um, right now, uh, do you think, and I'm an American too, obviously, but I'm both, uh, you ever thought about emigrating or uh, like leaving the United States for just retiring early and living in Italy, some, some fishing village somewhere, uh, somewhere? Hey, why not, right? Take your business with you, right? You ever thought about moving to the Caribbean or so and living there? Hey, take your business with you, right? So if you can do this from Hamburg, uh, no, even Bremen or Hamburg? Hamburg. Hamburg, that's what I thought, yes. Uh, and, and, and if you can do this from Hamburg, Germany, uh, my brother does this from, the, from southern Germany, from a town of 10,000 people, then uh, you can do this from really anywhere. So now open your eyes. This is an opportunity for you to literally like, like take the lid off. You think about, oh, where can I live? Where, where do I No, it's like if the kids are out of the house or if you don't have kids yet, then – where do you want to live, right? The world is your playground. You can be anywhere you want. And actually, that's a subject for you guys, right? Because your wife is from South America, right? Yeah. She, so. she is my sales, sales manager. She, do, she is very good in communicating with people. And she, <laughs> so she, she is my sales manager. So she follows up with the sellers, oh, well, and particularly with the buyers. Um, that are but, buying with but, us. But you guys have two young children. They're not yet officially in school, right? You have a business that you run together. You could, and you have spent extensive times over in South America, where she's from, and, and still done deals from there, right? Yeah, we did. We did. So uh, early this year, so we spent some time in, in Colombia. And um, while being in, in Colombia on vacation, we just uh, did some phone calls. And I think we sold two lots there. So it's, it's possible from anywhere. And nowadays, all information are uh, available from internet, uh, from, from Google, from whatever sources. Just an example, last year I, uh, I, I was on vacation in Florida. And uh, so I had some time and um, I, I, I decided that I, I will visit uh, one lot that I think was my second or third lot that I got under contract. So I visited that lot. I was very excited because it was a second or third lot. And uh, I, I, I went there, I traveled them, I rented a car and went there and I was on the, on the lot 
I was just disappointing because it was just a piece of dirt. You know, there was just, <laughs> there was nothing actually. So it was still vacant lot. But somehow, I mean, it proved to myself that it is not necessary that you, that you need to walk the property prior to, to selling it. Because right. all the information that is necessary for selling a lot or also for buying a lot is available on the internet. So no need to, to visit the lots in advance. Right. So now, yes, that's exactly right. So this is wonderful that you've done that because it's really, it made, it brought home the point that you really don't need to do it, but, uh, but you don't know that you, you always think you're missing out on something when, if you haven't seen your lot. So I always tell people, Hey, if you are close by to a lot, if you have a chance to go to a lot, don't to go to like an extra effort and fly somewhere just to see the lot. But, but if you happen to be close by, uh, then go, go, drive that extra half an hour to go see the lot. And what you'll, what you'll find is that, yes, you'll get some extra nice pictures of it. But other than that, um, you, you really are like, uh, okay, that was just an hour or two of wasted time here because I really don't need to do this. I either can get somebody to take pictures of it or I, if I need them really, or I don't really need them because there's Google Earth, Google Maps, Google Street View, County GIS systems, all these different things that are available for you to get uh, your pictures taken. So, so that's a wonderful uh, lesson learned there. So now let's quickly go back. So let's, let's round this all up. Now, now, John is, since he's so successful from Germany, he actually now came on board with us. He has gone through the land profit generator. He's done the investment dominant. He's done the maximizer, which helped him a lot to really learn uh, the species, as he said. And yes, you can confirm that, correct? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and he's actually also become one of our coaches, right? So he's gone through the coaching program. He's, he's been, he's, he's, he's studied it. He is, he's one of our coaches that, uh, that, that is now bringing German students and international students, particularly through our uh, through our program, and uh, and and how is that experience for you, John? Oh, that is wonderful. It's in particular, when my students are, have their own success story and uh, sell the first lots, um, this is always also for uh, yeah. This is also always uh, for myself. Uh, a great moment to celebrate once my first students uh, sell their first lots. And um, yeah, I mean, it, is, um, it makes me also very, uh, what well, is also a very satisfying um, task to help other people from abroad being successful in the land business. Yeah. You know? And while, for example, while, for example, um, I have t taught part of this to my brother. So my brother has been here uh, following us for 18 years. We've been doing this for 18 years. And finally, this year, he decided to jump in. And uh, true to like COVID and things like that, I was a little bit busy sometimes because we had to obviously adjust our businesses. Not the land business. Land business works as always. But our educational side of our business, we had to make some adjustments to things. So Sernke, uh, John, uh, actually took, uh, took, took on my brother for several coaching sessions. And I'm excited to say that he has three deals on a contract right now and is looking to market them right now. And then cool. and one of them, he could potentially make $75,000 on there. So, wow. so thank you, uh, John, that, uh, for, for your help there and, and for guiding him along, particularly on the pieces of international setup, which the setup from international, as we had mentioned right now, is a little different, right? You got to get the phone number, you get the, the virtual mailbox, you got to get the, the call center, the mailing house. And while some of these things are highly, highly, highly recommendable if you do this in the United States too, there's a few extra things you need to set up from international. And John was able to walk, walk, walk them through, all, through, through the, a lot of those, get them set up, get them going. And then uh, as things slow down for me, I took over for, uh, my brother again and, 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 and coached him for the remaining pieces. So that's what we do in our coaching program. We do as this teamwork, right? We, do, <laughs> we have sometimes the coaching, uh, sometimes we have, we have a coach that guides you to the beginning part, particularly in our new um, group coaching program, a coach that starts you in the small groups to the beginning program. And then we have almost daily or actually daily uh, group coaching sessions that happen, but you still have an accountability partner that, that looks over your shoulder, that, 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 that you check in with, that checks in with you, that makes sure that you progress, that can help you coordinate what one-on-one sessions you need because you do have one-on-one sessions that you still get. You have this entire, we, we surround you with 360 degree support in our coaching program. And it's the same thing we do in our two-day maximizer training, right? In our two-day maximizer training, 
We have multiple coaches actually teach that session and to teach you one is more technical, one is more business oriented because in the maximizer session, you obviously, you learn, you learn the use of our software, uh, you use of our process, you go to the entire process and you learn at every step how to use our software with it so that you come out of there, know exactly how to do this business. And, um, and, and, and so, yeah, so if you're interested in that, by the way, contact one of our concierges, let us know here below, uh, put in a couple of comments and um, so we can, we can put you together with one of our concierges. But now, uh, John, so now let's talk about what, what impact has this business made on your life? Oh, uh, it made much impact on my life. So let's start uh, time-wise. Um, so um, as I told, as I mentioned earlier uh, today, um, I used to work in the consultant company. And uh, as you know, the consultants, uh, well, they don't have a nine to five job. It's more a nine to nine job. <laughs> um, and uh, so, and I was traveling a lot. So every Monday or every Tuesday, I traveled to Frankfurt by train, and then I came back three days later. So uh, I didn't see much of my my children and um, during the week. And so now I um, sometimes I have busy days too, of course, but uh, I can uh, decide for myself if uh, whether I want to to uh, how much time I want to to, to invest in my business, you know. And so over time, wise had a big impact. And now speaking about COVID, so uh, before I, I uh, before COVID, I had my office, my own office in, in my house. And during COVID, so uh, I had my office in, in my house. So there was no change at all. So uh, I, I I work business as usual. Of course, some some counties uh, were impacted by the lockdown. But nevertheless, it was just a delay sometimes of two weeks, you know. And that's it's all open now closing. again. That's all, yeah, and that's all over now, you know. So there was no impact for, for, for COVID. And as you know, many of, uh, probably many of your friends or many of my friends, they are impacted significantly in their, in their job and they still, or by unemployment. And uh, this is nothing that I, I experienced the last half a year. Yeah, wonderful. So... And on the contrary, actually, on the selling side of things, things have probably heated up a bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. During COVID, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we actually, everyone is reporting ourselves to see that too, that more and more properties are selling quicker because people are sick and tired of being at home and they want a place outside in the green area that they can go and, and spend their weekends on and bring an RV and rent an RV, buy an RV or something and go out there or build a cabin and, and have some natural social distancing going on there. So, so yeah, so, so, so it's great. So, I, I echo that. I mean, the reason actually this is funny because uh, John, because you were in the in the consultancy call uh, with Anderson, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and oh, which one was it? Uh, was Accenture. Anderson, was Anderson it had some difficulties. Yeah, yeah, that's right. What's the <laughs> name of it that he worked for? Accenture. Accenture. Yes, that yeah. came out of Anderson. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember the prior ones because when I worked, uh, I, I, if you remember, I worked in a consultancy too. I worked just for the software company that had its own consulting arm for implementation of software. And oftentimes we would work together with consultants from Accenture. So his colleagues and me, we were working together on the mm. same kind of software implementation projects. So I know how it went. You start at 9 a.m. and you work until sometimes 9, 10, 11, 12, midnight, sometimes through the weekends if it was a deadline. Sometimes I wouldn't even come home for a week and a half. And then in that case, they would at least agree to fly Michelle out for the weekend. But would Michelle see me? No. We would, like, we would spend, she would basically be hanging out in the hotel or take the rental car and check out the city. If I was in Denver, Colorado, she would check out the city. She would check out Denver. I would be working in some cold office space, usually without even windows, until like, five, six, seven, eight at night. And then I would go and I would have dinner with her, but at least we would see each other. But that's kind of the world in that consulting world. And that is such a painful world, but that the pain of that discontent is what drove us. The pain of that discontent probably to some degree drove John to look at, look around and say like, there's gotta be another, another option. Is that accurate? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. So, 
So that's, that's what my experience was. And if that's your experience, that you're in the pain of discontent right now, that you're in the pain of in a situation that you don't really don't enjoy, you perhaps you still have a safe job, right? Whatever that really means in the COVID environment means that perhaps your job survived, right? Perhaps it was a white collar job that just was moved over to the house, but, but they still let go of 10, 20% of their staff or so. If, if you don't really enjoy what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you got to look into doing something else. And it starts with what we talked about uh, prior, which is which having a reason why. So for me, the reason why was to get out of this job that I had. For him, the reason why was to get out of this job that I have. But the reason why was also to get towards being able to be with our families. The reason was towards being able to not have like hotel food all day long, not have to be uh, traveling all day long, not being away from the family. So it's towards being with the family, towards being in control of your own life, towards oh, yeah. actually making more money and being able to spend those times with your family. Because we, get, we actually have this very similar background, right? Just that you're in Hamburg where you're from probably, uh, but you're still like your wife wants to visit her family more than once every three years for a week, right? You want to go spend six weeks a year over there, just like we want to go spend six weeks a year over in Europe and spend it with, with family and six weeks or as much time as we want, spend it with family in Honduras. And, and we do that. And this business has allowed us to do that. But you got to define what your, what, what your reason is. So, so with that said, um, Really, uh, that, uh, do you have anything to add to that, John? Has that hit the, hit the note with you? Oh, absolutely. Um, especially, especially, you know, the degree of freedom increased uh, significantly because I can decide for myself, you know. Um, of course, I have my buyers and I have to fulfill the needs of my buyers, of course, but uh, I can decide for myself how much time and uh, I want to invest in my company and how much uh, and um, so I, I can decide for myself and when you have a job you usually can't because right. you depend on your client you depend on on, on your boss and uh, that's not no longer the case so I really appreciate the type of work uh, that I can decide for myself All right right exactly right so this is it's like true time freedom it's Freedom to do what's important to you. And yes, of course, it's still a business. You still got to put in work. You still got to put in time. But, yeah. but you do that. And every time you do a deal, there's, there's like as much cash in there as a usual deal that you usually make in multiple months or there's cash flow, which we haven't even talked about, which we'll do for another time. You also obviously also have cash flow coming in from land, which is another beautiful thing. Yeah. So with that said, um, yeah, I wanted to thank you for being with us, to be for for being with us. Um, I I really enjoyed the session, and really, um, I just uh, yeah, just want to thank you, thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you, Jack, for inviting me, and hope to see many people uh, joining the, the courses to to get them to get them on uh, yeah to get them on 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 track to 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 be successful with the land property. Wonderful. Yes. Same. Same here. So. Right, with that, with that said, um, that, yeah, thank, thanks a lot. Enjoyed this episode? Then make sure you like, subscribe, and post your comments and questions below the video. We're looking forward to hearing from you.